Shout out to our sponsor, Dollar Shave Club. See why over three million members, men and ladies alike, love Dollar Shave Club. They're so confident in the quality of all their products. Now you can get your first month of the club for free, you just pay shipping. After that, it's just a few bucks a month. No long-term commitment, there's no hidden fees. Get yours at dollarshaveclub.com slash no. Welcome to The Know, I'm Ashley Jenkins. Everyone was amped up for the newest Legend of Zelda last week. Breath of the Wild finally debuted after years of waiting, but it wasn't Link's newest open world adventure that took home the bestseller crown. Well, in the UK at least, which is what we have weekend numbers for. Apparently, Nintendo's exclusive was number two on the bestseller list for the week, second to Sony's Horizon Zero Dawn. According to MCV UK, Aloy defeated Link by a wide margin, plus Horizon Zero Dawn now represents the biggest ever debut for a new IP on PlayStation 4. That puts it ahead of some pretty crazy things like No Man's Sky, The Division, For Honor, and countless others that have released in this generation. Still, it should be noted, just to be fair, the Horizon released on Tuesday, giving it a little bit of a head start to reach the top spot while Zelda released on Friday. Nonetheless, seriously, awesome job for both Sony and Guerrilla for managing to come out ahead of one of the most storied franchises in video games. That's no mean feat, and Horizon is awesome. Microsoft made a splash in the gaming industry last week with the announcement of Xbox Game Pass, a subscription service that gives you unlimited access to downloadable Xbox games for just $10 a month. Now we're learning even more details about Game Pass, including the fact that Microsoft intends for some game to debut on the service. In a conversation between Xbox's Phil Spencer and Major Nelson, Spencer indicated that could be the case, saying there is an opportunity here to not just be about games that have already shipped. I would actually like to see this grow into a program where you can see frontline games and first shipped games come into Xbox Game Pass as a way to get distributed. He went on to make comparisons to things like Netflix, which debuts a ton of new series on its platform. Xbox Game Pass as a portal for exclusive Xbox content would definitely be an interesting route for Microsoft to take and would also help bolster the service's value even more. No word on exactly when Xbox Game Pass will get its official release just yet, but we'll be keeping our eye out for more information. The long-rumored PS4 firmware 4.5 update may finally be getting its release this week. A website PSU, citing a PlayStation support leak, is reporting that the new firmware should arrive tomorrow, bringing the much-anticipated boost mode for PS4 Pro. Boost mode will allow the PS4 Pro to get a significantly improved frame rate on older titles that haven't been supported officially with a PS4 Pro specific update. Based on tests by a number of outlets, the new mode offered a significant improvement on games like The Witcher 3, Bloodborne, and Arkham Knight. The new firmware will also offer 3D Blu-ray support for PlayStation VR. So congrats to that one guy out there who's been waiting for that feature. One of the major success stories of the first quarter for 2017 so far is none other than Conan Exiles. The open world survival simulator is just chock full of dongs. We knew the game had been doing well for itself since its release, but now we're hearing some surprising details. According to a new interview between Engadget and Funcom creative director Joe Bylos, Funcom was on the verge of bankruptcy before Conan Exiles released. However, the surprise success of the game helped the company make its budget back in just one week, which is very impressive. Conan Exiles has now gone on to move in the neighborhood of 500,000 copies. Funcom has also recently detailed the next expansions coming to Exiles, which include Siege Warfare, NPC armies attacking player cities, sorcery, mounts, a settlement system, and more diverse biomes. With all of the craziness of the last few weeks of game releases, you might have somehow, possibly, forgotten that Mass Effect Andromeda is also out in just two weeks. If for some reason you feel like you're already sick of all those open world games that are releasing like Horizon Zero Dawn and Ghost Recon Wildlands and Nier Automata and Breath of the Wild, because really, none of those games will last a whole two weeks, right? Uh, you could opt to play Mass Effect Andromeda a little bit early if you're subscribed to EA's Origin Access. The company has now detailed what the early trial of Mass Effect Andromeda entails. According to Bioware producer Fernando Melo, players will get 10 hours of play in the game's single player with story access gated after a certain point in the game. In addition, players will also have access to the full multiplayer experience ahead of release. EA and Origin access to Mass Effect Andromeda both unlock on March 16th. 
Wolverine might have gotten a little bit old these days, but he can still kick ass. Logan was an absolute beast at the box office this weekend. The movie, which stars Hugh Jackman as an aging Wolverine, raked in an amazing $85.3 million domestically over the weekend, according to Forbes, which is something like 25 million more than projections. That makes it the biggest R-rated launch ever in March and the fourth biggest March debut ever behind Batman v Superman, The Hunger Games, and Alice in Wonderland. Globally, the movie made a total of $237.8 million when you add in international returns, which means it's already made back its $97 million budget, according to Variety, in just one weekend. The movie, which also stars Patrick Stewart returning as Professor X, opened in first place in 80 of the 81 markets where it screened around the world. So yeah, if this is Hugh Jackman's last turn as Wolverine, he's definitely going out with a bang. Speaking of superheroes, the Deadpool 2 teaser was released this weekend, and get ready for more hijinks from the mark with the mouth. In the short teaser, we see Deadpool witness a mugging and then dive into a phone booth, change into costume, shades of Superman. We also get a cameo from Stan Lee, and Deadpool also does a terrible, terrible Australian accent, which means that maybe we'll get a Hugh Jackman appearance. Maybe, possibly, no, we're all just hoping. Sadly, once he finally emerges from the phone booth, the mugger's already escaped, shot his victim, but on the bright side, Deadpool does find some ice cream and eats it on the dead guy's body. Because he's Deadpool and he's a horrible person, but we love him anyway. There's no release date for Deadpool 2, but we officially can't wait. Also, it's quite interesting, it opened before Logan, and the version of the teaser that's released now is different from the version that was before Logan. Different music, the Stan Lee cameo wasn't before Logan, I can tell you that. Neither was the Aussie accent. The live action Beauty and the Beast debuts next weekend, which is not this weekend, the one after that. Uh, reviews are out though, and they're mostly pretty good. It's currently got a 73% on Rotten Tomatoes, with reviewers praising the songs and the movie's faithful retelling of the 1991 animated film. Time Magazine said that, even though director Bill Condon more or less faithfully follows that movie's plot, this beauty is its own resplendent creature. USA Today said it, Mary's visual spectacle and sumptuous design work with a better story than its original, casting a spell on old fans and newcomers alike. Others, though, not so impressed. The BBC said the director's motto must have been, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Another motto might have been, if it ain't broke, don't remake it. They weren't fans. And the Oscar goes to Luke Skywalker? Apparently, Mark Hamill is getting a lot of praise for his role in Episode 8, The Last Jedi. J.J. Abrams, who directed Episode 7 and is executive producer of the upcoming film, gushed about Hamill's performance as an aged Luke Skywalker, where he presumably does more than stand on top of a mountain for a few seconds and just make extended eye contact. Abrams told the New York Daily News, I think we are all going to be very upset if he does not win an Oscar, and no one more upset than Mark. Hamill's never been nominated for an Oscar, which is kind of crazy, but there's a first time for everything. We'll have to wait and see for ourselves. The movie hits theaters later this year on December 15th. Feels like a long wait now, but just think we're gonna have teaser trailers probably next month, and then December will be here before you know it. And we'll still all be really late with our Christmas shopping. League of Legends cheaters just got owned after the game's developer won a $10 million settlement against a service that lets cheaters play automated games in the popular MOBA. The settlement stems from a lawsuit that Riot Games filed against League Sharp, which charged users a monthly fee to access its botting services. The agreement requires League Sharp to pay Riot $10 million, as well as bans its software and gives Riot control over its sites, Engadget reported. The service apparently shut down in January, but we're just now learning about the terms of the settlement. Just goes to show, cheaters might win sometimes, but they also might sometimes get sued out of existence. All right, that's all the news we have for you rounded up from the weekend. What do you think of all the stories? Let us know in the comments down below to make sure you get news from every corner of the internet every day. Make sure you like this video, and if you're new here, subscribe to the now. Thanks to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring this update. DollarShaveClub.com delivers amazing razors right to your door so you don't have to keep using the same dull razor because it's a pain to go get them from the store and you always forget and then you got a gross razor and it's probably got, got a lot of like hairs in it still. Yeah, you don't want that. They've got a whole lineup of razors too so you can decide just how fancy you want to get. Plus extras like Dr. Carver Shave Butter, Mint Cedarwood Body Cleanser, it smells really also really nice smelling amber lavender soap, or you could go the Gus route and get the peppermint tingly butt wipes. It's gonna be honest, they're a lot of fun. 
Dollar Shave Club is so confident in the quality of all their products, you can get a first month of the club for free. All you pay is shipping. After that, it's just a few bucks a month, no long-term commitment, no hidden fees. So if you decide that you want hair everywhere, then you can do that. There's no reason not to do it. Get yours at dollarshaveclub.com slash no.